find out. Maybe God is what you feel when you stand on a very high mountain and see a beautiful view all around you. Or maybe God is what you feel when you hear beautiful music, sometimes soft, sometimes loud. Or maybe God is what you feel when you see a million stars at night and you feel very small looking up at them. Maybe we can feel God when there's loud thunder or bright lightning outside our windows. I know I pray to God sometimes when it thunders a lot. How about you? Long ago, people thought that the sun was God, like a very strong and great light that shines through everything and around everything. But now we know that the sun is just one star, and really just one small star, in a big universe filled with millions of stars. The universe is everything. A universe is everything you can see when you look up at the stars at night. Some people think that God is an old man with a long white beard who sits up on the clouds and looks down on us all the time. They think that this God knows everything, everything we do or say or even think. And when some people talk about God, they look up the clouds towards him. Sometimes this guy, God is a nice old man, but sometimes this God is an angry old man. And some people think that if we are not good, this God will be angry with us. It's all right. Maybe God is an eternal mystery. Eternal means forever and ever. But the mystery is like a big puzzle with lots of pieces you have to put together. People of the Christian religion understand God as a teacher of Jesus Christ taught to them about God. People of the Jewish religion understand God as a teacher Moses taught to them about God. People of the Muslim religion understand God as the teacher Muhammad taught them about God. And there's more. People of the Buddhist religion understand God as the teacher Buddha taught them about God. And there are many, many more teachers who have taught many, many different people many, many different things about God.
But if there's so many different ways to learn about forever puzzle of God, how can we ever begin to understand God? We could start by reading different holy books. Most religions have a holy book in some, which someone wrote down what their teacher taught them about God. People of the Christian religion read a holy book called the Bible. People of the Muslim religion read a holy book called the Quran. People of the Jewish religion read a holy book called the Torah. Buddhists read the sutras, while Hindu people read the Vedas. I said that right, I'm sorry. You see, religion is very different, and people of every religion understand God in their own different ways. Sometimes people of one religion want everyone to know what is God in the same way they understand God. Sometimes people of one religion don't like people of another religion just because their religion is different or they don't understand the other religion. And sometimes people of one religion start fights with people of another religion because they don't understand that most religions are almost the same. Did you know that? No. They are. How are most religions most, almost the same? Most religions teach you that you should be good to other people, just like you would want other people to be good to you. Most religions say that you should not lie, or steal, or hurt people. Almost all religions say this. If everyone thought about all the ways in which different religions are the same, maybe people wouldn't have so many fights about the different answers to the question, what is God? But wait, we have only talked about the big religions. There are many people who believe that there are many gods, not just one God. And there are some places in the world where you are not allowed to talk about God and where there are no places allowed to even pray to God. But in our country, we believe that everybody can pray according to his or her or their religion. And everybody is allowed to ask, what is God? So if you really want to feel God, close your eyes. Breathe in deep. Listen to your breath go in and out. And think about how you're connected to everything. And even if you are not touching everything, you can start to feel God like that. And then maybe you soon will know the answer or think you might learn the answer to that very, very big question that everybody asks, what is God? So, did this give you the answers or did it give you more questions? More questions. More questions, but that's okay because you can ask those questions here. Mm. So, everybody, remember, BBS is coming up. We need you to get online and register, okay? Let's have a little prayer. Dear Lord, when we think of you, we all have a different idea in our mind, and every single one of them is right. So, let's remember that just because we aren't the same in where we go or work or go to church, we can all find common ground to work together. In your name we pray. Amen. And children in second grade under can go to celebration with Miss Vicki, and the older kids can go to their folks.
Today's scripture is from the book called Acts, chapter 11. The apostles and the brothers and sisters throughout Judea heard that even the Gentiles had welcomed God's word. When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. They accused him. You went into the home of the uncircumcised and ate with them? Step by step, Peter explained what had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying when I had a visionary experience. In my vision, I saw something like a large linen sheet being lowered from heaven by its four corners. It came all the way down to me. As I stared at it, wondering what it was, I saw four-legged animals, including wild beasts, as well as reptiles and wild birds. I heard a voice say, get up, Peter, kill and eat. I responded, absolutely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice from heaven spoke a second time. Never consider unclean what God has made pure. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled back up into heaven. At that very moment, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Spirit told me to go with them, even though they were Gentiles. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered that man's house. He reported to us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa and summon Simon, who is known as Peter. He will tell you how you and your entire household can be saved. When I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as the Spirit fell on us in the beginning. I remembered the Lord's words. John will baptize with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If God gave them the same gift he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, then who am I? Could I stand in God's way? Once the apostles and other believers heard this, they calmed down. They praised God and concluded, So then God has enabled Gentiles to change their hearts and lives so that they might have new life. The word of life for this day. <laughs> so this week, In the news, we have heard news, we have heard more than what we previously knew about Native American boarding schools and 
and what happened to children who were taken to them. If you listen to some of these reports, you heard horror stories of abuse and beatings and disease and death. Indigenous children were taken to these schools as early as 1860 or so, taken there to indoctrinate them into a culture, a language, and a way of life that was not their own. So did you see some of the photos from these schools, from the children? Images of first American children wearing prairie style clothing and boys in suits and ties, none of which reflected who they were or how they had been brought up. All of this was done to erase the existence of the first peoples of our land, to erase their culture and their language. And to do that, brutality against children was practiced, an act of discrimination Many of these schools, while they were sanctioned by the federal government and apparently encouraged by the federal government, they were run by churches. They were church-related because the church people wanted to Christianize the native people. And they saw that as changing their way of dress and their language that erasing of their culture had to do with Christianizing them. And so they did that by very unchristian means. They were acting on the belief that other people should be more like us, and then that would be better. Well, sometimes we still think that, right? So, the scripture that I read a while ago from Acts describes a message to Peter about discrimination. It starts by telling that people had started interacting, Peter had started interacting with some Gentile people, the others. And he had even eaten supper with them. How could you? He was asked by the people who believed like he did, how could you eat with them? And so he tries to explain, and, and he says, I like this, that it says, I went step by step to explain to them how this could be, should be. He says, okay, I had a vision. Are you going to argue with that? I had a vision, and in this vision there was like a big sheet, and it was filled with all kinds of animals, clean and unclean. He says three times he had this vision, and there was a voice, a divine voice, that said, Never consider unclean what God has made pure. And I want to erase the last word. Never consider unclean what God has made. Later on, Paul would struggle with this quite a lot. The idea that Gentiles can be acceptable as Christians and he turned his way of thinking, too. The community of believers had a really hard time with this, with believing that what was outside of their cultural framework might be acceptable to God. 
They had always known with absolute certainty that what you eat and who you eat it with are fundamental issues of faith. Now, today, you know, Protestants, we, we have washed all that away. We're willing to eat anywhere with anybody because I know you've been to McDonald's and you have just eaten there with anybody and eaten what they serve there too. So food that is clean and unclean, kind of all mixed together, I guess. A fundamental issue of faith to the people of Peter's time, who believe that Gentiles and the kinds of things they eat just are not acceptable. The food is unclean, the people are unclean. Now Peter says that he had known and followed all of these rules since the very beginning. He says nothing unclean has ever crossed these lips. He told them. And we have to figure out if we want to believe that. And then he had this vision. And it changed the way he thought. Something completely new now came into his head. So he got the message that what he always had assumed might need to be changed. And what he assumed about people would also need to be changed. So we're told that he's, he had this vision about this big sheet three times. And then it says, immediately, there were three guys knocking on his door, and they were Gentiles. Now, this is not an accident. We do a three, and we do a three, because it's telling us something about the other. So these three Gentile guys showed up, and they asked him to go with them to somebody else's house where they were going to eat to bring God's message to these other people. And he says, and I went. The end of Peter's explanation then, I love this sentence too. He says, who am I to stand in God's way? Who am I to not do what God has said to do, which is to stop discriminating. So Acts chapter 11 is an anti-discrimination decree for all Christians. Don't discriminate about food. Don't discriminate about culture. Don't discriminate about people. The people have been made and loved by God. Who are we to discriminate? Who are we to say what God made, who God made, is lesser than us? Who are we to say that our way, our language, and our culture is better This is about anti-discrimination. God wants to make all things new, including our way of thinking. Thanks be to God.
Please join with me in the offering prayer as printed in your worship bulletin. Holy God, you have given us so much. Through your love and abundance, our cup overflows. From the bounty of your blessings, we offer these gifts back to you. Use these offerings for your glory as we work to bring your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Loving God, generous of spirit, gracious in welcome, we come to honor you and honor one another this day. As we acknowledge that your circle is very wide, much wider than we would have it be. And as we acknowledge that your love does not know the bounds that we might set around it. We are grateful for the gifts that you've given to us. We are blessed by times of celebration and honoring one another. We are delighted when family and friends can gather and celebrate. And we are also lifted up and encouraged when we can gather and support one another in times of trouble, in times of anguish, Keep reminding us to open our eyes and open our hearts that we might share the peaceful love that you would have us share. We thank you for gathering us together as people of compassion and passion 
as people who stand up and speak out, and as people who reach out to share. We come to this because we were sent a message about your love and about how you look at all of us as beloved children. And this message came through the one that we call Jesus Christ. He lived and walked among us and showed us and taught us many things. And so in his honor, in his spirit, we unite our voices as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the food we need, and forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us all. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever, forever, and ever. Amen. Please stand and join with me in singing Help Us Accept Each Other, found in the Red on page 560.